going to read today for a text, and we'll talk here just for a few minutes on this from St. Luke, the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 4. This was right after Jesus, uh, well, this was actually the very beginning of Jesus' public ministry. He had just been out in the wilderness and was tempted of the devil for 40 days and 40 nights. And uh, he came back in verse 14 of that chapter, chapter 4 of Luke. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Esaias. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. And this was actually Isaiah 61.1 is where this was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. And all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? I think that's a very beautiful passage of Scripture here at the beginning of Jesus' ministry. And one of the things that stands out to me is that it was the beginning of no longer business as usual. Something was changing. Something was happening here. And it was not business as usual. And uh, the, so the church, if you will, of that particular time had, of course, had its beginnings in the, in the law, the Mosaic law, where Moses established the law and, the, and, and God gave the law and the Ten Commandments. And so... Of course, they were still following that, the, the, the religious leaders of that day. But what had happened is they had really had gotten away from God and it had become a formalism mm-hmm. and it had become ritual and tradition. And so they had changed some stuff and had, it, it, they had started some of their own traditions and not just, it wasn't just the, the law. And they, so they were real picky on certain things and, and lenient on others. It's like Jesus told them. He said, ye blind guys, he called them one day. He said, ye strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. Well, anyway, so the, the, the church, when, when people think of church, what? let's think for a moment, what do they think about, okay? isn't Church is supposed to be a place where people can get to God, Right? Okay, if you want to find God, if you want to get closer to God, if you want to learn more about God, if you want to know about God, what's really one of the first things that you you think to do? I'm going to go to church. Because at church there they teach people about God. And, and, and so that's really uh, what you know, was going on here. You had so many common, ordinary people who wanted to know God. They wanted to find God. And there were people who were serving God. Yes, there were. But I'm reminded of that Ethiopian eunuch uh, a few years after this right here. In fact, not very long. I guess it would only been probably about four years or so after Jesus read these words. When that Ethiopian eunuch, he had been to Jerusalem to worship God. 
And uh, he was returning, it says, and back to Ethiopia. He was on his way back. And he was sitting in his chariot reading Isaiah the prophet. And he read the prophecy about he was led as a lamb to the slaughter and so forth. Well, the Spirit of the Lord had spoke to Philip over in the city of Samaria and said, you go out in the desert. And I don't think he even told him why. He doesn't say that he did. He just said, you go out in the desert. And when he got out there, he was walking along and he saw this eunuch on his way back to Ethiopia reading the book of Isaiah. He heard him reading out loud and he walked up to his chariot or ran up to his chariot, whichever, and he said, do you understand what you're reading? And the eunuch said, well, how can I accept some man should guide me? But what stands out to me there, it says that that eunuch had been to Jerusalem to worship God and he was returning. You know what? He was still hungry for God. He had come to Jerusalem, but why did he come to Jerusalem? Because he had heard that's God's people. God gave them the law. And he had heard that that's God. So he went there seeking and searching for God. And he was on his way. It's so sad, I think. He was on his way back home. He had been to where the beautiful temple that the Jews were so proud of and they bragged on. And it was so great and magnificent and awesome. He had been there. He went to find God. But the religious leaders were so far from God. They couldn't even point Him to God. And so He was on His way back home. Hungry. Thirsty for God. But He couldn't find it in the organized religion of that day because it wasn't there. And he was hungry. So God spoke to a man who was filled with the Holy Ghost and he was following Jesus, one of the followers of Jesus. And he said, you go out in the desert. And Philip went out there and that man was saved and baptized. And it says he went on his way rejoicing. But he didn't find it in church. Folks, this may be a powerful statement, but I am, I am becoming more and more convinced that in these last days that we're living in, organized religion is not where it's at. It's not where it's at. Because it has become too formalized, too organized, too money eyes. <laughs> I made up a word there. Too money eyes. Too whatever eyes. And people are starving to death while they're seeking God. And what God needs is individuals that He can speak to who will go out into the world like Philip that God the Spirit can speak to and say, go out in the desert or whatever. That's who God needs today. I was telling someone the other day, in these times that we're living in now, it is very obvious that we're living in the last days. Okay, I've heard this all in my life. But now it is super obvious. Now we see it everywhere. Now we see the world in chaos and turmoil. We see the signs of the times. We see all this happening. It is no longer business as usual. It is past time to be sitting in a padded pew, comfortable and without zealousness and the Holy Spirit and inspiration, uh, without that kind of an experience. That is what we need. It is past time to be lukewarm. It is past time to just call yourself part of an organization. It is past time to just pretend. It is time to take a stand one way or another. It is time to become a follower of Jesus Christ. And what? Let's analyze that for a minute. What does it mean to be a follower of Jesus Christ? Instead of a follower of a church or a group of people or somebody, it means to follow the teachings of Jesus. It means to follow the teachings of Jesus. And I want to tell you, the teachings of Jesus were radical compared to what was going on in that church that, in the church that day. Jesus taught you love your neighbor. You turn the other cheek. 
You show compassion. You, you, you uh, give above and beyond what's expected of you. You give. You love. In the story of, of the, what we call the, the Good Samaritan, Jesus gave us that parable there. And, and He showed that's the kind of people. He said, Jesus said, you go and you do likewise. Give of yourself. Get your hands dirty. Get blood on your hands if you have to, like that good Samaritan. Get down in the ditch with the lost and with the dying and with the hurting. Get in there with them. It's one thing to sit up in a fancy church and say, you need to do this, you need to do that. Get in the ditch with them. Get dirty. Get bloody. Get down where they live if you have to. But do something. Do something. And I love what Jesus' ministry was. He said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me. The Lord anointed me, He said, to preach the Gospel to the poor. Oh, what good news that must have been. Sometimes the poor, I'm sure, felt so left out. Jesus said, He's anointed me to preach the Gospel to the poor. He's anointed me. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, He said. He has uh, preached to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering a sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised. Oh, what good news. That is what Jesus has called us to do. That's what He's called us to do. He hasn't called us to be formal. He hasn't called us to, 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 to sit on committees, pardon me for saying it, and all these structured things. He's called us to be radical followers of Him. He's called us to go out into the highways and byways. He's called us to take a stand. He's called us to be willing to be called fools for His sake. He's called us to be willing to die for His sake. We need Jesus taught. One of His, his very basic principles that He taught was don't love your life. He said, love God. But he said, he that loveth his life will lose it. But he that hateth his life, or loseth his life, he said, for my sake, will find it. That's the kind of attitude we need to have. I'm, we just need to have the attitude that, God, I'm going to follow you no matter what. I don't care whether I live or die, I sink or swim, if I give my life, if I have to suffer, whatever, I'm going to follow you, Jesus. And that's what we need. That's what the world needs today. <coughs> And I'm going to say this again, folks. It's way past time. It's way past time for business as usual. It's time to shake the church. It's time to shake people up. It's time to wake them up. Are you a follower of Jesus or are you not? Are you a follower of Jesus Christ or are you a follower of man? Which are ye? If you're a follower of Jesus Christ, then you will follow His teachings. God help us. God help me. God help me to be radical. God help me to be a man of faith. To be a, a man who, who's not afraid to step out and do what God says. Help, God help me. I need help. I need to do better. I need to reach out more. I need to be more bold. God help us to do that. I believe He will. Business as usual. Past time. Past time. Way past time. It is time to be radical. It's time to take a stand. It's time to be different. It's time to be bold. It's time to be brave. It's time to lean on God. It's time to let go of your life. And let God have it. It is time. God help us. God help us. Well, I pray that God helps all of us and that He speaks to hearts. And for those who do not know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, I want to tell you that is the greatest thing that you can know. He, as He said here, He said He came to preach deliverance to the captives. He came to open the prison to them that are bound. He came to set people free. I want to tell you, folks, the world is in bondage today to sin. They're in bondage. Sin just puts people in bondage. They don't even know. I, I've been dealing with uh, some, some things.
with with family and just my heart just breaks for stuff that people are going through in their personal life and i i just think about this and how the devil just puts people in bondage i tell you there's one simple answer and that's to turn to jesus christ but the devil blinds their eyes and, and they just have all kinds of problems and all kinds of issues. And they do this and they do that and they go here and go there and turn here and turn there when all you have to do is turn to Jesus Christ and He will give victory, He will give deliverance, He will give help. I'm not saying your life will be perfect all the time, but it will be wonderful if you have Jesus in it. And you will not be in bondage to the devil. But oh, today, if you don't know Jesus Christ, call on Him. Confess your sins, repent of your sins, turn from your sins, ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart and into your life. Tell Him you want to be a follower of His and all He will welcome you with open arms today. And the angels of heaven will rejoice because your name will be written in that Lamb's book of life in heaven. And you can look forward to seeing Him someday. God help us. Let's leave this place today, this little chapel here on the hill and wherever you might be listening today. Let's leave this place and let's go forth and let's be bold. Let's be strong. Let's say what God wants us to say with wisdom and with love and kindness. And let's reach this world in these last few days that we have left. Let's reach them. God help us. We're going to have a time of prayer today.